How's it going everyone? So we are just under 15 days left until we see the next generation of iOS, iOS 19, which rumor has it during WWDC, it's going to be totally redesigned. And so in this video, let's go ahead and look back at some most productive features that Apple has integrated on these last few firmware updates that are productivity focused. I know for a fact, not a lot of people know about these, nor are they using it day to day. So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and run through 15 of my favorite features for iOS 18.5. And of course, timestamps of everything will be in the video description down below for your pleasure. Let's get started. The first one I'd like to go ahead and go ahead and cover is always on display. So long as you have an iPhone that's an iPhone 14 Pro, 15 Pro, 16 Pro, Max or non-Max version, so long as the Pro you have access to always on display. But a feature I see a lot of people always fail to enable is disable their wallpaper. You see, once always on display is enabled, as you see right here, our wallpaper is gone. But to some people, they may have their wallpaper still showing when always on display is enabled, which means it's drawing a little bit more power than it should. So to resolve this, simply unlock your device, go into your settings, in the main setting page, scroll down to display. Right here, display and brightness. And then just go down until you find the always on display section, tap on it. And this is where you can enable to show wallpaper or not show the wallpaper as well as the site if you want always on display to always be on or be off. But a thing that a lot of people don't know about, by entering low power mode, if we lock our device, always on display will turn off to preserve as much battery as much as possible. So that's a little cool thing about always on display. And as an added bonus, if you put your phone in your pocket or in a backpack in a dark place, your phone is smart enough to detect that thanks to its integrated hardware, where it actually will turn off the display completely. And if you have an Apple Watch and you leave your phone in a different room and you walk away, as soon as it disconnects your Apple Watch from your iPhone, it'll automatically turn off that always on display, preserving more battery life that way as well. But regardless if you have the wallpaper enabled or not enabled, it won't show you your battery life percentage until you tap the display. However, there is a clever walk around you see by long holding and tapping customize in the customization page, tap on lock page, add widget, and if you go down and look for battery, you can select between these two. Let's select this one, just for the purpose of this video. And now, by tapping on it, disable automatic, choose device, make sure you select the device you like to, to always monitor your battery life percentage. This way it's not automatic with the last pair of device. Now it will show us our battery life percentage on our iPhone. If I enter always on display mode, it'll still show it right there on our lock page. That's a cool little tip right there. Additionally, since we're in the topic of battery life, if you'd like to see your battery percentage right here because this was recently removed and then added. So if you're new to the iPhone, you may have this turned off. If you wish to simply enable this, go back to your settings and go into the battery tab right in here and just enable show battery percentage. Now it actually will show it to you right then and there. Now, if you ever get a document paper and you need to scan and sign, a lot of people don't know about this. You see, by long holding on the folder app, it will prompt you the ability to actually scan a legal document. Just tap on here, it will immediately open your app, and then just get close enough, and then you, all you need to do is just hit save or change like different filter settings if you want to include color or not, or make it seem like you legit scanned this from like a scanner. You have that frame to do so, and then tap done, and then save on the bottom. And then you can rename the document to whatever you like too. So by having done, tapping done, here you have successfully scanned a legal document and save it on your iPhone. And from here you can share it with an email to an email attachment or even sign it if you need to. But you do have pen options as well. And then when using the calculator app, if you tap here, it will actually give you a history of some of the past equations you were entering. So you no longer have to backtrack or remember what calculation you last previously entered. It's all saved automatically on the iPhone. And if you like additional tools, you can tap right here. You can switch between other notes, including the notes app, which allows you to convert like written text into like the equation, like you just saw the answer right there. 
which lets you convert like handwritten equations and will give you the actual answer right there as you see it's highlighted in orange. And then real quick, if you've been enjoying this video so far, if you could take two seconds to hit that like button and like, that would be truly appreciated because I like to keep my videos sponsor free from integrated ads because I don't know about you, but they're kind of annoying, especially when they're integrated in the video and you really can't skip it. So instead of wasting like a minute or two of your time, if you could just take two seconds to hit that like button and like, Truly appreciate those and then support the channel to be continued sponsored by you guys to viewers, not brand. Let's carry on. Additionally, the spotlight tool can also answer equations. So something basic like four times four. It'll tell me the answer right then and there. You can also tap copy if you like to paste elsewhere as well. But it also does conversions. So if we do $18 or $16 to euros, it will actually convert it right then and there. It also does Celsius and Fahrenheit, miles per hour to kilometer. You get the picture. You could just enter it in spotlight search and we'll be able to answer the question. Additionally, if you're looking for like an app as an example, like our calculator app, you can also click and drag it from here onto your homepage. And you can also leave gaps now as well. It doesn't automatically organize it all the way to the top. Now, Apple Maps on Apple CarPlay, you go single-handedly zoom in and zoom out without using the the plus or minus arrow to zoom in or zoom out. Just double tap the screen and long hold, you could zoom in and zoom out just like that. Now this method also works the exact same way on the Apple Maps app on your phone. So if you're a motorcyclist or a cyclist and you're trying to operate your phone one-handed, you could simply just double tap the screen, long hold, and zoom in and zoom out just like that without having to pinch and zoom like you traditionally have to. Additionally, if you're typing in something, and you're trying to move your cursor in between something in case you did a typo, always remember long hold on the space bar will turn your keyboard into a trackpad. So you can actually adjust the cursor to where you want to go and you'll be able to correct your mistake like that. Uh, this is just an example. Now back on our home page, if you like to lock an app, again, you go always just long hold and you have the ability to not only remove the app, but require face ID to decide if you want to lock the app but have it on your homepage or hide the app but only accessible through Face ID. So by doing this, verifying with Face ID, now if you open the app, it requires Face ID to have access to this. So you can easily lock your apps and keep your devices more private like this in case you're sharing your device. Additionally, if you launch your photo app but your friend is right next to you, instead of clicking on it and tapping the three dots up here and tapping high and risk your friend from seeing it, you can always just long hold and then select hide from here and then hide that photo quicker. You can also tap select and select photos, tap the three dots down here and tap hide. A much quicker method. Now every iPhone, of course, has a hidden button back here, the Apple logo. You see, if I double tap it, it will activate App Switcher on my phone. If you like to have access to this or other shortcuts, just go into your iPhone settings Scroll down to the Accessibility tab, click on here, go down to Touch, and scroll down until you find Back Tap. In the Back Tap tab, click on it. You can select Triple Tap or a Double Tap. But by selecting here, you'll find a lot of amazing shortcuts you can select from. Everything from launching the front-facing camera to activating your flashlight, Control Center, Lock Your Rotation. That's actually a good one right there. I'm going to change mine to that. Lock your screen so you don't have to hit the power button. Shake, Siri, Spotlight, Volume Up or Down, and so much more. And if we hit Back Tab, you can allow it to show the banner or not. That was that little square you saw earlier. I like to see the square so I know exactly what happened in case I falsely activate it. So by launching YouTube, and if I select on this first video, I rotate my device. Let's say, for example, I don't like it to rotate. I could just now Back Tap the back of my phone double times. That little banner will pop up, let me know that it worked. So now it will no longer rotate. If you're curious why my screen turns black as soon as I do this, it's because I have a privacy screen protector. I tested many others and this is the one that works best. So if you're looking for one of these, I have a link in the description down below, not sponsored. Just something I wanted to mention in case you guys ask why it turns black when I do this. Now, let's say for example, you have a friend who's over and they like to connect to the Wi-Fi network you are connected to. They could just bring their phone right next to your phone and a little Wi-Fi share screen will pop up as soon as their phone is on the Wi-Fi settings section. But let's say for example your homie is using the rival phone, an Android phone as an example, that feature will not work. 
He said you can key generate a QR code in the password app. By launching the password app, it will require Face ID to unlock. But in here, you can select the Wi-Fi section, go into the Wi-Fi you like to connect to, and then just tap on scan network code. And now your friend can just scan that code and their device will be able to quickly connect to the Wi-Fi. This is extremely useful, especially if you have a very long, complicated Wi-Fi password. Now the focus modes on the iPhone are extremely useful to use, especially when you're working or working out even. You see, by tapping here, you have all these like pre-made ones available. But if you notice and look closely, I have a few custom ones like this fitness one, as well as this the mode of all modes that I have here. If you'd like to modify an existing one or add more, you can tap on these dots and go into settings and it will quickly take you to one of the modes you like to modify. If you like to create more, you can tap back and tap the plus icon and create some more. But I'm gonna be using some existing ones. So the mode of all modes. In here, I could enable Apple intelligence if I like to be involved or not involved, where I'll scan my notifications and will only show me the prioritized or important ones that I think are the ones that I need to be aware of. But if you scroll down, you could choose between people that could bypass the focus mode regardless of what you're doing, as well as your apps. So you can select some exclusive ones to still be able to notify you. And if you go down, you can choose between custom watch face or wallpaper on your device as well as home page. If you choose choose for a wallpaper, custom wallpaper for your watch, your library will pop up and you can just check mark the one that you like to automatically switch to whenever that mode is enabled. You can also create a custom schedule down here as well. Filter the distractions you like to completely remove whenever this focus mode is enabled. Or you can also delete the focus right here down here. But the thing I like to show you is all the way on the very top, you see by tapping edit, this is where you could customize the focus mode to your personal preference and you have all these amazing icons to select from. And you can also name it from here as well. So now whenever these focus modes are enabled and you enable it for like an hour as an example, that's the icon that's gonna show on all your devices, including Apple CarPlay. Now GIFs are a lot better than actually sending a photo, especially when it comes to messages as typically GIFs require a lot less resources than a video. And a lot of people don't know this, but your phone can actually create GIFs on the go. I didn't realize that wire was in this video, so apologies for that, bear with me. But by exiting out of here and going into the shortcut app, right in shortcuts, going on the very bottom in gallery, if you type in GIF, there's a built-in make GIF shortcut. By adding this to your page, Getting out of here, going into shortcuts, you'll see it right above here. Tap on here, it'll automatically launch all the videos that are compatible to be used as a GIF maker. This will also include live photos as well. You can select it, and simply select one, it'll show you the progress, and then just like that, it created a GIF right then and there. And you can share it with your friend and create those custom GIFs off your iPhone. Now, when it comes to Safari, there's a lot of amazing tools on the Safari. You see, by long holding, of course, you could close all your tabs if you have over 133 tabs like I typically do. I have a habit of not closing them. But let's say, for example, you have something you like to actually pin. Just long hold on one of these icons and tap pin. And now if you tap on top, you will see it be pinned right above here, where you can always go back and monitor your pin tabs. But let's say, for example, you like to keep some of these tabs into a different folder. You create a new tab, so keep this. This is what I'm gonna call it. Tap done. And now you can simply slide between a new type of tabs right here. And if you like to move some over, just long hold. You can tap on as many as you like, just like an app. Go to the new tab and drop it right then and there. And now if we move back to this tab, and if we long hold, you can close all these tabs. And notice your pin ones are saved and you have an additional tab right here. And it doesn't just end there. Let's say for example, you have a group project, right? Tap the up arrow share icon. You could share it with a friend, family, or coworkers. You could create custom project groups where everybody can monitor these tabs in case you're working in a, like, a group project as an example with somebody else. You could also monitor a tab group by doing this too and create a new empty group tab. But there you guys have it. Those are all the amazing productive features that you can find on iOS 18.5. Let me know in the comment section which one of these was your personal favorite. And if you have one you'd like to suggest for everybody else, feel free to comment down below. I will most likely pin it on top. So you'll be on top for everybody else to also see. 
Now, if you wish to watch more, maybe like to see all the cool features that Apple CarPlay has to offer, I go in greater detail in this video over there where I show you all the amazing tips and tricks as well as hidden features that Apple CarPlay can offer. I even show you a clever way to disable the auto play ability once you turn on your car. It doesn't play your media. I show you a clever way to disable that in this video over there. Thank you once again for watching.